If you're using weak self in your tasks and unwrapping it, you might be doing things poorly. A poorly placed unwrap of self inside of a Swift concurrency task can actually completely mitigate the fact that you used a weak self in the first place. In this video, we're going to find out exactly why. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that right now and like the video if you find it useful because that really helps the algorithm. Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to first take a look at why we use weak self in the first place by looking at some old completion handler based code. After that, we're going to take a look at how this works in a Swift concurrency task and how that's different from the old way of doing things. And then we'll take a look at a more complicated example where a poorly placed guard can actually result in a huge waste of resources on your user's devices. So let's dig right into Xcode and see everything you need to know about weak self and Swift concurrency tasks. So, what I have here is a simple object that I call network service. It's a class and it really doesn't matter whether it's a class or a struct or anything like that. A struct would not have most of the memory issues that we see here. We're dealing with a class. And if you don't like that, I'm sorry, but it is what it is, right? In your code base, you might have a class like this. You might have a different class altogether. It really doesn't matter for the point of the example. So if we have a function defined on network service, that will first call load data, then process the data, and then do something with the results, that function might look a little bit like this. We'll call it fetch everything, and it's going to make a call to load data, it's going to receive some data, then it's going to make a call to process data, pass in a closure that receives strings, and then it's going to call do something with strings. This chain of methods really isn't all that crazy, even though it is simplified, right? Load data doesn't actually do anything. It just calls the completion handler. Process data doesn't actually do anything, but in the real world, obviously they would. So when we call load data, that might take a little while. So it's a pretty much a best practice to make sure that if network service needs to go away, for example, because the screen the user was looking at goes away and network service is tied to that screen. So we want network service to also be deallocated alongside the screen. Uh, we need to make sure that that can happen. The code as it currently is holds a strong reference to self, which means that if the screen lets go of network service, our closure is still holding on to it. So the system is going to keep self in memory until that last reference has been released. To avoid that, what we can actually do is make self weak inside of load data. And then we can check that self is still there when this closure is called and we can go ahead and call process data. Now this works because load data gets called, we pass in that closure that we have our weak self capture. Load data does a bunch of things and then later on it calls our closure to inform us that the work is done. Before we process the work, we check that self is still there to see if processing still makes sense. So there's a significant delay between us calling load data and capturing weak self and this closure being executed. So that's why the guard makes a lot of sense because self might have gone away during load data. This allows us to call process data without an explicit self. And we need to repeat this dance pretty much for process data because once we do guard let self, we have a strong reference to self again. So if self didn't go away during load data, we now have a strong reference and we call process data. So process data might also take a little while and then it calls its completion handler and then we do something with our strings in response. So we want to make sure that self can actually go away during our call to process data. While process data is doing its work, we want to make sure that self can actually be deallocated. So we do another weak self. And then when the closure is called, we check that self is still there. And if it is, we can go ahead and do something with our strings. This actually makes a ton of sense and it makes sure that self is never around longer than it should. And it prevents us from processing data for a screen that a user will never see. If we translate this example to be async await or Swift concurrency based, we might redefine process data to look a little bit like this. We'll take in some data, mark the function as async, and it's going to return an array of strings. And we're really not changing anything about the example here. So we're just going to return it. It's not actually going to be a function that awaits something. 
Again, the point isn't what we do inside of this function. The point is how we're calling these functions. So we also define func load data. It's going to be async, it returns data, and it'll do the exact same thing as before. Do some work to load data, and then it returns data. Right, so we can see what we're calling, and I'm sure you can imagine what this would look like in the real world. So if I do fetch everything task, I'm going to create a new unstructured task. And you might define this as an async function, but again, this isn't about what you would do in the real world. This is about when you create a task and you do a bunch of work, you have a weak self, what could go wrong? So fetch everything task, uh, we, are going to be safe. We're going to weekly capture self and we'll go ahead and guard let self and then we'll await our data, process our strings, and then we'll do something with them. This code might look fine at first glance and I've seen code like this in production environments regularly. So let's talk a little bit about how this task closure is different from a completion handler like this one. A task in Swift Concurrency starts running as soon as possible. And usually that means pretty much immediately. So when we call this task, we schedule this closure to be run as soon as possible. Since that is pretty much immediately, we, we do have our weak self capture here. So the task initially is going to allow self to go away. But the time between creating the task, capturing self and starting our closure is so small that self probably didn't go away. So when this closure starts running and we hit this guard, it's pretty much already guaranteed that self is still going to be there. So this guard will almost always pass. Once this guard passes, we have a strong reference to self. So we start our call to load data and self is held on to strongly. So that means that we're not going to let go of self. Then we call process data with this same strong reference that we had before and then we do something with strings. This code right here with this weak self positioned in this way is pretty much the exact same thing as not capturing self weak at all. Because we unwrap it and strongify it at the start of the task. So we're, we're only having a weak reference to self for a fraction of time. So this is pretty much the equivalent, not capturing self weakly at all. And note that we don't have to use self explicitly here and that's because of a feature that Apple introduced um, a while ago where certain closures where Apple feels there's a very small potential for memory leaks, uh, they won't force you to use self. So Apple pretty much considers this to be fine since the task will start, it'll do a bunch of work which might be wasteful, but eventually um, the task ends and self is released. So it's not really a memory leak, it's very temporary and resolves itself. But let's say that process data is super expensive and you don't want to do that if self has been deallocated. You can actually have a weak self capturing a task. And you could do something like guard let data equals await self question mark dot load data. So if between the task starting and running this uh, self has gone away, we'll just return. And then we can do the same for let strings, guard let strings equals await self question mark dot process data, else return. All right, so we won't call process data if self has been deallocated. And then we can do something with our strings if self is still there. So this would allow self to go away during our calls to load data and process data. Should you do this in production code? I generally speaking don't think you should. I think we can follow Apple's example of saying we don't need to capture self at all. We can just have our strong capture by default and use it that way because this resolves itself eventually. Um, on the other hand, if you do some heavy work and you wanna make sure that you don't waste CPU cycles, you could always do something like this where you uh, use optional chaining on self. There is a more difficult example where I think the problem is much more pronounced and that is when you do something that takes a while to run inside of a task. For example, you could have a for loop or a while loop like I have here um, and that while loop might run indefinitely if you're not careful. This can also happen if you subscribe to an async sequence where you write for value in sequence and that sequence never ends. If you wrap that in a task, the task will not end unless the sequence ends. If the sequence never ends, the task never ends and anything you capture in the task is going to be held on to strongly if you're not careful. So let's take a look at the code here. 
there's a bunch of stuff around this that you don't have to be interested in. Um, the most interesting part is, is the task itself. So I create a task with a weak self and I immediately check that self is still there. Now we already know that self should be there and we're creating a strong reference to self now. And then we keep running while the task isn't canceled. We get data, we sleep, we get more data, we sleep, we get more data. Imagine that this is used to load a bunch of pages of content and the code would look maybe a little bit like this, has more pages equals true initially, and then maybe get data returns a page uh, and then has more pages becomes page is last. But we could do something like this in the real world where right, we would end the loop if has more pages becomes false. I omitted all that because I wanted this example to be as simple as possible. And I wanted this to run indefinitely to give you a sense of how bad things can get. Let's go on ahead and run this to see what actually happens. We're going to run this inside of a view. I have a button here, creates an instance of my service class. It will call get list with weak self. And then after a second, it's going to set sample to nil. So let's go ahead and do that. And what we'll actually see is we click run, we're starting our data load, there's an artificial delay, and then we start the next, there's an artificial delay, we start the next. Now I know that I'm setting self to nil, so maybe what we can do is inside of the D init, we can refresh task.cancel. Now we already saw the print output, and you might be expecting what we're about to see, but the deinitializer is never actually called, right? We keep going. And that is because we have that strong reference to self right here. So when we enter our while loop, self is held onto strongly. And we need to figure out a way to let go of self in between loop iterations, for example. What you can do is instead of capturing self strongly at the beginning of the task, you can move that guard into your while loop. So now when the iteration in the while loop starts, we check is self there. If self is there, we're going to get data and we'll sleep for a second. After that, self is going to get let go off and we're going to start the next loop iteration where we have a new strong capture of self. So if self wants to be deallocated, it can be between the loops, right? So let's actually see that in practice. So we'll run this. We see that we start the data load, data was loaded, service class deinitialized, and now we see no further values. All right, so every iteration gets its own strong capture of self. So if an iteration ends and self wants to be deallocated, it can, and then the next iteration is going to break out of our for loop. This way we can break the retain cycle and we can correctly use weak self in cases like this. So what you've seen in this video is that Weak self and tasks can be pretty tricky to use correctly, especially because if you use your old way of thinking where you immediately unwrap self with a guard, you're going to have a strong reference to self throughout your task. You might not want that. So whenever you want to capture self weakly in your task, for example, because you're doing a long running task, make sure to only unwrap self where you need it. Use optional chaining if you can to avoid having strong references to self at all. And Really be careful and test your assumptions around how weak yourself really is. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and I will see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching.